So welcome back to Cozy Rosie Crochet and today I am sharing with you the short wave square. Now this square uses just single crochets and double crochets to create this really cute wave pattern across this granny square and we're going to be using two different colours to create this blend. Now before we get started don't forget to hit the subscribe button and of course that notification bell so that you never miss out on another one of my crochet tutorials or hodgepodge blanket and granny squares again. There's 30 squares that have been released as part of this crochet along and you can find a link in the description box to access all of those granny square patterns along with a link to follow along for this written pattern itself. Let's find out the materials we need to make our own short waves granny square. So the materials that you're going to need to make your very own short wave square is going to be any iron weight or worsted weight yarn. Now I'm going to be using two different colours so that we can really showcase this stitch off to its best. Um, all of these yarns are a size 4, so iron or worsted weight, and I'm using the two colours shade 202, which is champagne white, and then I think I have 245, which I believe is pale lilac off the top of my head. I'm going to be using these two together to create this square. I'm going to be using the corresponding hook size that's recommended for this yarn, which is a five millimeter crochet hook. This is my Furls Streamline hook, which is one of my absolute favorites. Of course, I have a darning needle because we're going to have a few ends on this one and I have a pair of scissors as well. So gather all of your materials and let's get started. So our short wave square is worked in rows. So we're going to start by making a chain. So we're going to make our slip knot and place that onto our hook. Now I'm going to be using two colours in this pattern. I think I've already mentioned that, but just to reiterate, my colour A is going to be the champagne white, which is 202. And my colour B is the pale lilac 245. So once we've got our slip knot on our hook, we're going to start by making a chain of 26. And to do that, we just yarn over the hook, bring our hook through the loop on our hook to create that chain. And we do that 26 times. So make your chain of 26 and I'll meet you back for the rest of row one. So once we have our chain of 26, we're going to start by making one US double crochet into the fourth chain from hook. So we count down from the top, remembering that this loop doesn't count as a stitch. So that's one, two, three and four. So we yarn over the hook and insert our hook underneath that first loop of that fourth chain. We yarn over, bring our loop back through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now these skip chains count as a stitch. So we have one double crochet, two double crochets. We're going to work one double crochet into each of the next two chains. So you can see here we have a stitch coming out of this chain. So we're going to work into this next one. So we yarn over the hook, insert it under that top loop, yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we repeat that again. So we insert the hook into the next chain, bring our loop up, pull through two and pull through two. This has created a block of four double crochets and then we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next four chains. So we just insert our hook, bring our loop up, yarn over, pull through two and we do that into the next four chains altogether. So that's number two number three and number four. So now we have a block of doubles and a block of singles. We're going to work one double crochet into each of the next four chains. That's one, two, three and four. And we're going to continue to repeat that all the way down our chain, working four single crochets followed by four double crochets. So continue to repeat that all the way down and I'll meet you at the end of row one. So I've reached my last four chains and I'm just going to work one single crochet into each of the last four. So that's one, two, three, and four. At the end of row one, we have 12 double crochets 
and 12 single crochets. Before we go into row two, we're going to change colour. So I'm just going to move my yarn out of the way, make sure they're not tangled before we even start. And we're going to undo that last stitch so we can change colour properly. I say properly, how we're supposed to. So to do that, once I've undone my last stitch, I'm just going to insert my hook and bring up my first loop. Then I'm going to drop my colour and pick up my new colour, which is colour B. Just going to place that over my hook with the tail at the back and then bring that through the two loops to complete that final stitch. Just pulled on that working yarn just to tighten that loop underneath and we're ready to go straight into row two. So for row two we chain three so that's one, two and three and that chain three does count as a double crochet. Now I'm not going to work over my colour A because we're going to need that on the on the way back. But if you want to, you can work over your tail from your colour change to bury that a little bit to save you having to weave it in so much. Now because this chain three does count as a stitch and it is representing a double crochet, we're not going to work into this stitch underneath the chain three. We're going to work into that next chain and into that next stitch and we're going to work one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. So we insert the hook into the next one and work our double crochet. That's number one, two and three. And what you see that we've done is we've worked one double crochet into each of the next. We've worked one double crochet onto the top of those single crochets from the row below. We're going to work one single crochet into the top of these stitches. So that's one single crochet into each of the next four stitches. Now that we're working over these single crochets, we're going to work four double crochets, one into each of the next four stitches. And we're just going to repeat that all the way down. So we work one single crochet into the next four, one double crochet, and then we're doing single crochets at the end. So continue to work down row two and I'll meet you at the end of row two. So at the end of row two, you should still have 12 double crochets and 12 single crochets. Who continues in color B and we're gonna start by making a chain of one and then we turn our work and we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next four stitches that's one, two, three, and four. And then we're going to work on top of these double crochets, working one double crochet into the top of each stitch. That's number three. And number four. So we're going to repeat this all the way along, working one single crochet into the next four, one double crochet into the next four, one single crochet into the next four, ending with four double crochets at the end. So continue to work along row three and I'll meet you at the end of this row ready to change colour going into row four. So I just worked half of my last stitch because we're going to change colour at the end of this row. And so I've dropped my colour B and I've brought it to the front of my project because I don't want to get these yarns too tangled. Um, and you'll see that the my other colour is at the back of my project. So I'm just going to bring it up and over my hook and complete my last stitch with the new colour. I can pull down on colour B just to tighten that last stitch. So at the end of row three, you should still have... 12 double crochets and 12 single crochets. 
going into row four, we're going to repeat row three, which is the row we've just worked. So we start with a chain of one and then turn our work. And then we work those four single crochets. That's one, two, three, and four. We're going to continue to repeat row three. So we've worked our four single crochets. We then work four double crochets, followed by four single crochets, all the way down to the end. And we're going to end with four double crochets on this row. So continue to work all the way across for row four, and I'll meet you in a moment for row five. So at the end of row four, we've completed our singles, doubles, singles, doubles, singles, ending on our double crochets. And then for row five, we're going to repeat row two. So for row two, we chained three, one, two, and three, and that counted as a double crochet. So we just work one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. That's one, two, and three. And then we work one single crochet into each of the next four stitches. We then repeat four double crochets, four single crochets, four double crochets, and we end on the single crochets for row five. So work all the way along to the end of row five, and I'll meet you back in a moment for the rest of the repeats for the pattern. So at the end of row five, you should have ended with your four single crochets, and then we're ready to change colour again. So for row six, you're going to work in colour B, so you need to change back to your colour B. You're going to continue to repeat rows two and five, changing colour every two rows. So work rows two and three with colour B, and then repeat rows four and five with colour A. You're going to repeat that until you reach row 20, which means that you should end your last repeat on row four in colour A, and then come back and we're going to work on our edging. So I've just worked row 20, which is the equivalent of row four in colour A, and this is how my square is looking. I hope yours is looking the same. We're going to go straight into the edging, and we start that by chaining one, and then we're going to work down the side of our square. We start by working our edging around that post of the final stitch that we worked. And we're going to work evenly, working 24 single crochets evenly down the row. So working into the end of the row and then work one around the post as you need to until you get an even number of 24 down to that first corner. So work down and I'll meet you in the first corner. 23 and 24. You've had to skip a couple of them, it hasn't squished the square too much. And then in this bottom chain here, I'm going to work my corner which is one single crochet, a chain one, and then a further single crochet worked into that same chain. Then along the bottom, we're going to work along the other side of our chain, working 24 single crochets. So work those and I'll meet you for our next corner. I'm one stitch short along the edge. I'm not going to overly worry about it. In fact, I'm just gonna work my corner here. So my chain one, and a further single crochet into that same stitch where my slip knot was. And then we're going to work back up. Now, if like me, you've carried your yarn, just need to make sure that you're working over that where you can possibly. And we're looking to work 24 single crochets evenly up this side as well. So work those. You can skip your single crochet stitches if you need to. So where I've got two singles here, I'm just going to work into one of them and then carry on up along, working over those yarns that we've carried. So work your 24 single crochets up this side and I'll meet you for our next corner. So just working my last single crochet of my 24 up the side and we're ready to work my final corner into this first stitch. So one single crochet, a chain one, 
and a further single crochet. I'm not going to weave in that tail because it is a different colour. I'm going to bury it in the actual purple stitches. So the final thing to do is just to work one single crochet into each stitch across the top to finish this nice little border and then we'll work our final corner. So I'll meet you to work our final corner in a moment. So I've just worked my last stitch. So I'm going to work a chain one and a further single crochet just to finish that final corner. Ready to slip stitch into that last or first stitch that we made and we are ready to fasten off. Pull that through. Might need to give us a bit of a light blocking, but actually it's not too bad. So that completes our short wave square. I really like it. I think it looks like sound waves. So I really, really kind of like this stitch. So thank you so much for joining me. Make your own short wave square as part of the hodgepodge blanket crochet along. I will see you again tomorrow for another one of our granny square patterns. Until then, keep it cosy.